Super DNY Real World HVAC Simplified. And today I'm going to show you how to determine if your compressors are bad. So here's compressor one, compressor number two. All right, so here's the AC unit. I'm going to show you how to determine if these are bad. So the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, get to the compressor terminals. As you can see here, these are the compressor terminals, compressor terminals. And this is the connector. In this particular case, this is how it looks. Other scenarios, you gotta become creative. You gotta get to the terminals. You know, you just follow the wires. The wires goes in to a terminal, all right? Get it off. And uh, you're gonna need a multimeter or tester, electric tester. Make sure your power is, disconnect is off. Okay. So let's get into it. So you have your meter set to a uh, resistance scale. I think continuity is better. And continuity. So when you touch these leads together, wait a minute. Now you know it. Should give you a beep. Okay, there you go. Should give you a beep. When you touch the leads together, it should beep. And then you want to go ahead. This is this is. Uh, doesn't matter if it's a three phase or a single phase compressor. This compressor here is three phase, um, three phase power. Doesn't matter. So you will, you will have, if it's a scroll compressor or a rotary compressor, um, or if it's hermetically sealed, this is an hermetically sealed compressor. And these are the most popular compressors you will find in an AC unit. All right, so there are gonna be three terminals and you'll check for, for continuity across all three in pairs at a time so that's good it's supposed to be ringing out these two is good so you see that i got my beep on all all three pairs so let me do it again so i go first these two those two and it's ringing out you're going beep your homes i go these two right here kind of hard doing it with just one hand all right but all I'm doing all I'm doing is putting the test leads across the terminals in pairs okay in pairs so three terminals you can do it three times three pairs and they, sh they should all give you that continuity or that beep all right if you if any of the pair of the three pairs doesn't give you that ring or, or, or beep then your compressor you have an open winding and your compressor is bad time for a new compressor okay you go ahead and replace the compressor um if uh so if you if you get if you get a uh, continuity or the beep on all three pairs again you can say a b c and then you go like a b uh b c and then C to A, all, th all three. If you get continuity in all, th all three, the next thing you wanna do is make sure your compressor is not grounded. So this is a simple way to do it. Um, uh, even though it's possible that the compressor could still be grounded, um, even if it passed this test, because you'd have to go and use a uh, mega home meter, which is a, uh, a, 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 a stronger uh, a stronger testing, uh, basically. It, it, it uses a high, higher voltage for testing so i'm just sticking this right here in the and uh call right here because it's you know ground same as chassis ground you know because i got it you know one hand holding the camera so wherever just get one terminal one of your test lead to ground right so now you're going to check and see if your compressor is grounded so you have passed the first test the second test is to see if it's grounded and you go across all three and you're testing to see if you get any ring or continuity if you get if you get this when you touch any one of these three while the other lead is on the ground then the compressor is grounded it's bad like i said it's very much possible to do this ground testing and it passes like right now and the compressor is still grounded because this meter only uses i think uh three volts that it sends out through these leads for testing but there's another meter it's called a mega home meter or mega tester 
and it sends out uh, a thousand volts. So it, it's, 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 it's a lot more sensitive, you know, and you can check the windings uh, if there's a slight connection to ground. This won't detect it, but the mega tester will. All right, so that's that. So now that's passed. Electrically, the compressor is good, it's sound. Electrically, the compressor is sound, all right? Hence, there's only one, one caveat over this. If it's grounded, and it's slightly grounded, whereas this tester won't pick it up. You need a mega tester, all right? But other than that, this compressor has passed electrically. Now what you'll do, you'll put your, uh, put your wire back, your terminal back on. Okay, that's back on. And then uh, now you will turn your power on. All right, so once you turn your power on, you want to find the controlling contactor, right? The controlling contactor for your uh, compressor. And one way to do this, the simplest way, take your time while the power is off, take your time and just trace the wire. Okay, so it goes here, same wire, same colors going up top right there and it comes over all right it comes right over and you can see where these wires comes around right one go here and one go there obviously these are your compressor contactors this one goes to this one and this one goes to this one you know by common sense so you take your screwdriver and you're definitely going to need one of these if you're going to troubleshoot and try to figure out figure out if your compressor is better or not and you're going to need a meter um and you just manually engage the contactor like this in this case my compressor is good so it runs uh if your compressor had passed the electrical test and you do this push that in and it didn't work well is it's it's no good mechanically because there's two possible problem that could be wrong with your compressor unless you arrive and you can see physically see a hole in the crankcase there's a big hole in the crankcase and then the leaks there's a leak on that but other than that there's two other things it's either mechanical failure or electric, electrical failure so if you did the first test with it with your meter and it's passed electrically and then you go ahead and you verify verify that you have power all right so the, the compressor this project compressor is 200 230 volts and it's um, three phase, right? So you want to make sure that you have power. That's another thing that I skipped. Um, you want to put your meter down to voltage, okay? And you want to make sure you switch uh, power switch. You can go directly to the power switch source if you want, or you can just go right here to the uh, this uh, terminal block and just check three pairs, right? Same way you check the windings. There's three pairs here. So you go across those two pairs, first pairs. See, I got power. All right, 212. I go across the second pair. All right, see right there? Boom. I've got power, right? And I go across the third pair. Boom. I've got power, right? So that's it. So we got power. Our motor has been tested and passed. This is the ohm testing or the, the electrical testing section of it and if you now push the contactor it doesn't run if it hums and pull if it if it hums uh, and it's going to be pulling high hams so then you could have your meter you know clamp on right here just to check as well to verify but once it passed it passed electrical testing which is the resistance um, testing and then you have power going to it and you push the contactor um it does, and, it, and it and it hums it doesn't turn over and runs then it's a bad compressor it's mechanically fouled the internal something is it's seized all right another third thing which you should do to check your compressor is um have your manifold gauges hooked up your discharge and your suction right here okay and so you're going to put the, the the red hose or the high side on here and the low side or the blue hose on here all right and then once you manually push it in you know you're testing so you don't want to make sure that your thermostat is off that's another thing thermostat has to be off because you want to have control you want to manually test at your discretion you don't want the thermostat to go boom and pull this in and then the compressor is getting power and while you're testing doesn't make sense make sure you either disconnect the, the y the y1 or the y1 or y2 or both y1 y2 or y 
get it off, disconnect it off the thermostat or pull the thermostat off the wall because you, you know, last thing you want to be doing is to be, uh, you know, um, uh, troubleshooting and then your compressor just get turned on and you know, it's just crazy, all right? So yeah, that's pretty much how you'll do it. Um, if the compressor runs, there's one last thing. So you pass the, 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 the ohm testing, the windings, everything is good with that. The resistance, everything is not grounded. Everything is good. The power is coming to it. That's great. You bump the contactor, it runs, sweet. All right, then you want to put your gauges on, right? And see that there's a difference in pressure of high and low, right? So if you're using um, R, R410, R410A, drop my flashlight, uh, typically your, your low side should be around one, between one, say one, 110 and 130, somewhere in the neighborhood, right? And then your high side, based on outdoor temperatures, you know, should be anywhere from say uh, 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 250 to, you know, 450, you know, somewhere in those neighborhoods, you know? But you, the, 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 what you're looking for is the difference on your gauges um, between the, the, the high side and the low side. Because the compressor could run, electrically run, it runs, but it ain't pumping. You got the same pressures across, same pressures on the discharge as on, this, on, the, on the suction. The compressor is running, but mechanically it's bad because it ain't pumping. All right, you can also check and tell by the amperage. So it's running, you can look at the tag, the, 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 the RLA, and this compressor is 20. But also, on the, uh, the tag on the unit, unit's name tag you will have a uh, a tag there as well that tells you the amperage of the compressor all right so you can get an idea what it's supposed to be drawing as far as amperage if everything is okay you have an idea it's not going to be exactly what's on the tags and the nameplate but you'll have an idea uh, of, of what to uh of what to uh what to expect all right so that's pretty much it if you got any questions regarding this and it's the same concept you lose for every compressor. Uh, if it's semi-hermetic, that's what I'm talking about. The compressor turns on while I'm working. You don't want it. You want to make sure that you have the control wires disconnected. Um, these are semi-hermetic compressors. So the procedure will be the same for all semi-hermetics. Ah, correction. <laughs> these are hermetically sealed compressors. And the procedure will be the same. Now, when it comes to semi-hermetics, uh, it, 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 it's, it's always going to be the same as well because you're going to end up with three terminals that you're going to be testing because it's going to be three phase and even if it's a hermetically sealed like these tin cans and they are your single phase is not three phase you'll still have uh, three terminals on your compressors to check it's just that it won't be terminal one or T1, T2, T3 it's going to be common start and run so going to be still three terminals regardless and you're going to use the same method all right and um yeah that's how you check if your compressor is good or not if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed subscribe and uh, don't forget to hit the notification icon because you'll get notified once i drop a new video so now let me go ahead and address the real problem that i came here to fix these uh condensing fan motors are bad and actually i came with only one because initially in the service call one was uh defective and so i came with only one so now they're both bad so i'm gonna have to do another trip back to supply house